Welcome back everyone to our 7 person free for all series on Dominions 4 playing as Shinyama. This is turn 47. Today I am joined by Sam and it's been a long time since I've had you on. I don't even know, I tried to, I mean basically I needed you to step in to help as counsel for this turn, but it was really nice to get a fresh set of eyes, so, so thank you very much for joining us. Yep, um, it'll be fun doing this. <laughs> yeah, and, I do like this game. <laughs> and you already have provided a, a fresh perspective, which, um, yeah, I might might have been missing. It might show <laughs> for for the last few turns. Anyway, um, let's talk about the events. Mainly, we're probably going to spend a lot of time on the battles. There was a battle in a Fizabor, and this is where we tried to defend against Fafnir and his his army of hydromancers. Why don't you go ahead and tell us what happened here? Um, the basics are the are not big big much of an issue, neither the claymen, but the hydromancers with the ice elementals and the practically untapped province defense pretender is just going to destroy this entire army. Yeah, it's amazing it's amazing to point out that Fafnir right now has over four hundred hit points and it's 217 by bonus from his dominion he also has really strong fear fear 10 as you pointed out um yeah and then these ice elementals they have trample they're very strong so yep not good yeah the ice wouldn't be able to win this but with fafnir causing fear the entire army is just going to run it's good to note that at least we did a couple hit points of damage to him. <laughs> yeah, lucky, lucky goals, basically. Yeah. Huh. <sighs> well, um, yeah. The only good thing you can say about this is that we were able to um, eliminate his chaff. Although he'll probably be able to recruit new chaff before we are able to face him again. So in the end, yeah. Yeah. In the end, we lost. We had, I think that was province defense of like 40 or something, really, really high. And uh, he didn't really lose anything for it. So. Um, we could kill him, but it will take a while to build up the troops. And unfortunately, we are technically reaching near the cutoff point. So. That's right. Well, make do or just sit around <laughs> and um, stall out the turns, I guess. <laughs> Stand off. Just no, I, I'm, I, my goal has always been go for the <laughs> go for the thrones. We'll, we'll, we'll do anything we can to try to grab those thrones for the turn 50, 51 victory. Um, this is Man's throne being taken once again by Vanheim. Uh, Man's kind of in shambles. I don't know if Das Tactic is going to play the the game with any amount of seriousness. I mean, he'll do his turns, he'll submit them and everything, but his main army has just been crushed and he has just no chance of really being impactful. Uh, I think no matter, there's just not a lot he can do at this point. Yeah, there's not you're really nothing he can do. That's right. So this was a pretty small fight, but um, his throne was once again retaken and uh, well, not much to say about that. Um, Glimmery Fields, this is the huge follow-up battle. And I'm going to spoil... Well, okay, let's go to the battle. Basically what happens is we were attempting to attack into Ivermark, which you can see we did here. Let's actually watch this battle out of order. Let's do Ivermark, and we'll just do this on triple speed. So we are planning to attack in from Ivermark to Ivermark from both the west and the north. And you can see here only half of our army arrived. So what happened is, Airmore decided not to wait for us to attack him again. He actually moved into Glimmering Fields. So this is um, half my army, where my casters of undead are here, and my dust to dust and cleansing waters folk are in the back. You can see there's these gaps, and this is because there's supposed to be one unified force, all moving into Ivermark together. And that means that my other force has to fight the main Airmore horde by itself. As you can imagine, that's going to be a very challenging fight. 
Um, we'll see how it goes in a moment, though. But I just wanted to explain the background. And yeah, okay, sure enough, we did. We were able to defeat um, this. We were able to take over Iron for Mark, at least. And only lost four Bakamono shows, kind of useless units anyway. So that brings us to Glimmering Fields. Um, I'll let you commentate this one. The big, big, big force. Now, I want to say that this force was 1700 before, and it's down to like 700-ish now. So we already did a number on it, but the problem is going to be that our line of Ubas is only two, you know, strength, <laughs> two Ubas for casting undead, and our line of dust, dust, and cleansing waters just is non-existent. So, um, anyways, go ahead and take it away. Um... As should be obvious, uh, we're a little outnumbered. <laughs> <laughs> um, this presents a big issue. A lot of the troops are also very low morale. Um, a lot of them are militia. And we're relying on them to hold off all of these troops, these undead troops, long enough for us to do enough damage to win, which. Hmm. Uh, unlike with how they're dying right now <laughs> and running. Um, so the question I have for you then, actually, because we can kind of see this, there's one really important end um, moment at the end of this battle. But as we can see, my forces are losing; we're being overrun. My question is, what do you do? You think that my combined forces, uh, the other group which we just saw, and this group together, would have been able to defeat this army? Um, I would have certain that they could certainly have damaged them much more, possibly make them much less of a threat. At the very least, they would be at up, which is less of an issue than their current position. Uh huh. Yeah. So we're trying our best here, doing a lot of flame eruptions and stuff like that, and we can see the important moment is coming here where Tortugasan and the god pretender Tortugasan and his faithful prophet Yukonaga kind of in a last stand here. <laughs> Everyone else is dying or fleeing around them and now they're just together and there goes Yukonaga and uh, Tortugasan isn't long to die after that. But the important thing is, and this is a really interesting um, differentiation to make, because we actually were not attacking them at Ivermark, but we are actually defending in our own dominion in Glimmering Fields, Tortugasan and Yukonaga actually both survived because they're immortal, and if they die in their own dominion, they don't actually die. So this was um, really kind of a, a stroke of luck. We can also see... Um, we can also see, sorry, I'll let you, um, but that we also took this number, I guess they were at 800, and they've another 300 knocked off, so they're down to 500, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I think we probably could have taken out another 200 off of that, and that would have been a fairly small army at the end of the day. Yeah, so, I mean, um, already... If we had both forces together. Oh, I see, so you think combined force, they would have only defeated, like, another 200? 200, uh, big problem is that Divine... Is Divine what? You cut out. The Divine Mummy. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, he has... Doesn't he have two of them? No, he just has one. Yeah, he has one the, really big one, though. The, what is this? Is I thought he had Fear. What is his, um... What's his special... Oh, he does have Fear 5. That's not... What's his... Why should we be fearing this guy so much? He's big, he's hard to kill, and can cause a lot of issues. <laughs> Mainly because he can create more fear, that would cause lots of issues, and they don't exactly lack troop. Hmm. They would just slowly grind away with you, and the behemoths would show up, and yeah, I would think it would be over about by then. Once the tramplers. So I, I actually thought it would go. Okay, so like if we were able to kill off two hundred and eighty troops, um, with only half our army, 
And although it probably was the better half of the army, obviously with Tortugasan and like a lot of casters, we have a lot of Ubas in the other one. And what I kind of imagined happening if we had, first of all, the Shura, and then the 11 Ubas, um, is that together, like, uh, the sum is worth more, the, the whole is worth more than the sum of its parts, basically. I, I think I that... I would say the cleansing water ones would have been more, would have been useful. Yeah, and uh, we can actually figure out how many of those are. Um, there's one more fight we should look at in Dark Woods. But this is not, okay, this is not something we actually have to look at. This is just us killing province defense at Vanheim. So nothing there. Yeah, so let's actually go over here and look at the surviving um, units. Oh, okay, of course, we turned them all into uh, cats, so we'll have to talk about it in a second. But we have one, two with water. Um, a lot of them would help with the casting of more chaff, which is just give our casters more time to be effective as well. Because, I mean, you look at one, two, three, four, five. Six of them can cast um, undead spells, raise more undead, and that would have helped buy more time for more spells for Tortugasan, and I don't know. I would have bought a few more turns, about maybe one or two more turns, but the, the, your big issue is that um, they're undead, uh, I think, are legionnaires. Legionnaires are just better than your normal, typical long dead. Yes, this is true. I mean, I'm not trying to say that my a normal undead will win. It's just about buying time, I think, for my spellcasters. Because obviously, in terms of spellcasters, uh, Airmore yeah. doesn't have anything. He has his, you know, pretender, and then he has what? What the? What really helps him out here? Um, I would say the bishop, and that's about it. Uh huh. Because. His cast. He just boosts up the other undead. Um, he doesn't have a lot of casters in this army. The, your big issue is that your big issue is that um, you would have to destroy them, and I think you would eliminate most of the army, so you wouldn't be able to move too much. Uh huh. But that would also have required him to stand still and. He wasn't going to do that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, to one thing to we didn't mention is if we had fought an Ivermark, he would have had his province defense to lend to that as well. I don't know if that really would have made much of a difference, but just something to mention as well. Uh, I don't think it would have made that much of a difference. It's, it's our beat, and another 50 isn't going to really matter. <laughs> mm -hmm. So our plan here then, moving forward, is... Um, We actually discussed quite a while whether to move to Glimmering Fields or Solom or, you know, what. And your recommendation was that we actually move to Solom so that, um, for, first of all, I guess Scythia, we can ex we can hope, at least, to hold for two to three turns before falling, right? Yeah, our hope is that it won't immediately destroy it, which will allow us to sneak in and do some fun stuff. <laughs> right. And that's why, in order to, like, you know, increase the length of time, hopefully we can hold out until the end of the game, even. In order to increase the length of time we hold out, we're recruiting Obakamono, and we also are summoning here Crocodiles and Leogryphs. Yeah. Um, probably the thing that I differentiated from your strategy at Ivor you know, your strategy of attacking Ivermark again, I'll just mention is I probably, this is just because I'm worried about this kind of situation happening, is probably would have just ran to the fortress and just put everyone to protect the fortress at all costs. Yeah, actually, we discussed this a little bit off, I mean, well, during this turn, and it's really, it's a good point. Um, last turn... I have to say it was a little bit rushed. I was a little bit rushed to do it. And I seen you before and I did not really dialogue very long. So I wasn't, I think um, I seen you before was also kind of in a hurry at that time. So we weren't able to really discuss what to do on this turn thoroughly. And it may have led to this kind of mistake where I just decided, I think I asked him if that, he thought that was an okay thing. And he said, yes, who knows? Maybe his, if he had heard, if you had been there as well, like to lend this kind of idea, maybe we would have been able to listen to it and pull back to Scythia. 
But um, yeah. I, I want to say the reason why we were not thinking to pull back is because it's all or nothing for, for me. I want to either take this game by Ascension Victory or I'm not really interested in winning on points or anything. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't know even how the victor will be determined. I guess maybe there won't even be a victor at the end of the game if there's no nobody who actually ascends or we'll leave it to the fans to vote who they want to be the victor. Who knows? I have no idea. And my only goal is to try to win the game. And this is the, our only chance at winning is to try to move through this army and we have to take a Feasibor. Basically, we have to take a Feasibor and we have to take NAM roll. So without either of these, it's useless to even worry about defending Scythia. Yeah, I can see that point. I would just say that it would be impossible. <laughs> it would be near impossible to do it. Well, like, we'll, we'll certainly give it... the practical side. Because... Go ahead. Because that you would have to assume a lot of things. A lot of things that, um, for me as a player, just wouldn't happen in my experience hmm yeah so if you're saying that we only have like a 10 percent chance of victory well that's fine but for me i'm going to try i'm going to roll the dice on that 10 percent chance just because yeah uh we have nothing better to do i mean the, the other solution is just to let the game finish but i'd rather go for the go for the win yeah basically though a troop like to over to Ivermark, right? But I would say that this guy should move back. He's not going to be able to meet up, unfortunately. He'd have to go over here into this town and hopefully find something useful to fly over. Ah, uh, you're saying go to Scythia and then use like some flying tool to get to a Feasibor? Yeah, just fly over as best you can because now you can't you're not... with it. With the magic carpet, you can only go through your own territory, though, right? No, it's fine. You can just fly over territory. Okay, so it allows you to go three territory, to any move any three territory. Yeah. So. So we could go like one, two, three, or I get okay, one, yeah, two, so. three, and then get to a feasible next turn. So we'd have to stop no calls or somewhere, right? Yeah, so you could go over to like Ivermark, or you could go over to here. This guy could pull back. You could say build a lab here. I think there's no lab in this. Are you talking about or Scythia? Yeah, Scythia. Scythia has a lab, yeah. Oh, Scythia has a lab. Yeah, then you would just move over here. You try to move over here, here, and everyone else would run. <laughs> everyone else would just run down to a feasible. Well, this army tries to stall out this guy. I see, yeah. I, I, I see what you're trying to say. You're basically saying that we shouldn't have attacked Ivermark the second time, maybe even the first time. I don't... Uh... Well, first time, I think, was a good... You had a reasonable... I would say it was still very risky, but I, I could understand that the second time, it's it didn't make a lot of sense in my opinion. Okay. Okay, so you would have been better back. just to run around the giant army and and try to defend your remaining fort. Uh huh. Yeah, and the, there might be some. It's good for for us to present that perspective because there might be um, viewers who also agree that that wasn't the best choice. Yeah, but it it happened, and now we gotta live. Like yeah, so to... let's talk about the um, few things we are gonna do that we can do, like. like that's we didn't do that, but what can we do now? Yeah. Um, we're trying to move all our forces into dark woods, and we're even gonna leave everyone. We're gonna, I mean, take everyone out of Kennen, one turn, two turn, and then on the third turn we're gonna attack a Feasbor. Kind of the interesting yeah. thing I already mentioned is with Tortugasan and Yukonaga. Yukonaga has the magic carpet. With the reason why we aren't giving it to Tortugasan is just because he has this affliction, diseased, and. We're not sure if he'll lose that last hit point. I don't. You and I, we were talking about this. I don't know how it would work, and actually, doesn't you're not exactly sure how it would work either, right? If he would die or not. Yeah. Because um, when you die, you lose your items. That's the main thing. We don't want to give him a magic carpet, have him die. You can see he lost all his items. Yeah, and he's not going to heal, unfortunately, because he um because of disease. So he spawned with one hit point, and not going to do anything. 
we were a little bit worried about Yuki Naga as, as well. Yeah, because he's <laughs> negative four. <laughs> yeah, but then we figured it's probably because he has undying five. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So we're pretty confident he'll get better. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, it's a mystery. Um, but confident for him. So we're going to so give him the carpet, and we're going to move him to Kennen. And then from Kennen, he's going to move to Dark Woods. So basically, turn 47 to 48, he's going to here. Then 48 to 49, he's going here. 49 to 50, he goes to a Feasbor with the entire army. And then, because the entire army includes a um, priest here, or Yukonaga himself is a prophet, so he can also do the attack himself. So basically... On turn 50, we can claim the throne, and then when the game resolves at the end of turn 50, if everything has gone well and we still hold Cynthia, and by that time, if we've taken any armor, we ascend and we win the game right at the nick of time. Yep, it will be close. It will be no more. You know, maybe we'll do it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a lot of maybes at this point, unfortunately, because... <laughs> um, yeah, it is. There is a lot of unfortunate events that occurred before this final plan that was put in place. I mean... Um, to, by the seat of our pants is kind of... Accurate. Flying by the seat of our pants. Huh? You cut out again there, but that's okay. We heard it. Yeah. So we'll talk um, a little bit about this as well. I mean, uh, not really much to say just to get this episode out, you know, pretty quickly. We don't need to spend too much time talking about all the nuances, but we're, um, we've are we breached any emerald, and after a large amount of deliberation, we decided that we would attack with only two of our Shuras to storm the castle. I'm, like, almost 100% sure there's nobody there, that there's not going to be a battle, but you were... Um, hesitant that it would be basically saying that it would be worse or I mean I'll let you my we talked about this for a while and I kept saying I don't think there's anybody there and you were saying like let's leave some people to just make sure that it ki we kill whatever's there right yeah this issue with the um the biggest issue is that they might just die from from like a priest or three priests uh -huh. we, could, we could use the extra guys, basically. Yeah, so that's, I mean... Spam that, is an issue. That's... So the only thing we're worried about is maybe a priest being back there. I just, I have a, a strong feeling that there's probably nothing there, but everyone else, I really want to go and attack Vanheim, and my goal here is, my hope is I can actually draw Fafnir back out of a Feasibor. I don't think it'll happen. We have to wait and see. But um, it'd be, even if it doesn't draw him out, it'll be kind of fun to be sieging Vanheim's throne. I mean, uh, capital, if the game comes to a close. <laughs> yep. Um, but, yeah, it'll be pretty interesting, I would say. Yeah, and... Uh, we also have CERN, which we're moving, uh, I mean, this guy's moving out, and we're going to move in with some people. Uh, I didn't talk about this, but we have started to destroy the gate at CERN. I mean, nothing, there's no uh, breaking of gates yet, but CERN's been, that defense has been kind of worn at for a couple turns. Uh, NAM roll, obviously, that one was breached, so we're going to go breach, and... I guess I, I should mention for Dark Woods, we're preparing some chaff to help us out with this attack on a Feasbor. And hopefully these other extra people can help assist as well. Is there is there anything I'm missing, Sam? I don't know if I've covered all the things we wanted to talk about. Did we talk about research yet? No, we did not talk about research. Okay. So this has changed. We were originally doing construction and we were going to do weapons of sharpness. That's what I seen you before was talking about. And now, on your advice, we switch over to Thaumaturgy. And this is because it was very unlikely that we'd be able to get Weapons of Sharpness. We need 
pro I mean, it would probably come to us on the, the turn 51 so that we can't even act on turn 51. We just submit turn 50 and then resolve turn 51. Um, so, and we can get thaumaturgy and you were going to say that this is for what? Um, sleep and some, I think for sleep, this will be useful if we get very lucky. Uh -huh. It will put to sleep and we can just bop it with a bunch of spears. Yeah, so your the idea here is if we can get Fafnir to sleep, this is like a chance at victory. <laughs> Yeah, it's if we can put Fafnir to sleep, it's basically instant win. <laughs> That's awesome, but it, it's very unlikely. But it will again playing with that maybe sub ten percent chance to win the game. Let's go for it. Is there anything else we're missing? Uh, I think. I'll... Oh. Um, oh yeah, there is one thing. We're gonna try oh. to invade any emerald and hope that there's a laboratory there because we do have our now flying fish friend who's going to come here to claim the throne but if there's a lab there we can get him to give up his carpet and give it to Tortugasan who then also can make it in time for the battle at Ephesbor but we just again the reason just to explain it again we don't know if he'll die based on having a disease losing the hit points and then he'll reincarnate since he's in our dominion but if he loses a magic carpet it'll be pretty sad so we kind of think Yukonaga is a safer bet and then, even though we will have another fish going there, Shad Foth, um, Yukonaga is not a terrible combat unit himself. So, um, um, I think that's it. Okay. Well, I guess you'll probably be joining us for the next turn as well. So, good to have you back. Any um, final comments on how... What you're seeing i mean it's been a while since uh since you've been on if you have any comments about something that happened in the past even too if you wanted to bring up i'm just amazed that she you know i done so well <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah that'll be really interesting to talk about i hope we get to do a wrap-up podcast at the very end um because the one thing i would yeah. the one thing i will highlight there is diplomacy i think diplomacy was you know writing all those emails was uh nine tenths the battle yeah. Okay. I think that is it for me, though. <laughs> like, Perfect. I don't have anything else to add. Okay. Well, thanks for joining, and uh, that'll conclude this episode. So, hopefully, we'll get Sam back for the next episode, and we'll see how our build up in Dark Woods goes. It's possible we aren't building in any province defense here, but it's possible that Fafnir could do a preemptive strike. We're not sure. Um, and I will be really excited when we actually attack Vanheim itself. Plus, we have to see how long our fort in Scythia can last. So, um, Oh, yeah, I don't know if I explained this, but we're sneaking into Solom so that we can then sneak into the fort at Scythia. Um, but I am bringing the main Shura just to Glimmering Fields directly. Because, um, well, uh, actually, the one last thing, can we, I don't, do we already explain why we're sneaking them here instead of moving them through glimmering fields? Oh, that's um, that's because they um, were just a patrol instead of right, 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 right. Yeah, if they patrol, perfect. That's exactly the reason why. Okay, well, sorry, I got I got caught up talking again, but <laughs> we'll bring this episode to a close. So, thanks so much for to Sam for joining us, and thanks for watching. Until the next episode. Take care.